While the cinematography, special effects, soundtrack, and most of the acting are damn impressive, there's not much to like or care about the characters in this story. There's dozens of characters, and let's run down their traits established in the first two episodes. We have Galadriel, who's bent on vengeance and murdering orcs, to fill the gaping hole she has inside. But you must learn to discern them for yourself. I won't always be here to speak them to you. I'm gonna die soon. <laughs> no, I was just about to say. <laughs> Hold on. Jack's like a damn psychopath. She's impulsive and arrogant, unable to empathize with anything other than her own self-serving determination. Our days of peace begin. Look at this absolute psychopath. Look at her face. Days of peace? How dare you? <laughs> yeah, no, not on my watch. I'm, I'm, taking, I'm taking the elves out to slaughter. Will you lead more elves to die in far off lands? To convince yourself you have done enough. How many more statues well, would you add to this part? As far as as far as we, the audience, know, she hasn't let any elves off to die because they all survived. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she can bring as many as she wants. The actress keeps doing this weird thing with her eyes that make her look completely deranged. They're trying to give the impression that she's tormented by grief, but the execution of her story lands closer to a jaded soldier bewitched by the blood of the enemy. Then there's Rondir, who has the personality of a flatfoot cop on Ambien. And the poisoning? What poisoning? The one we were just discussing. No one He's the lone wanderer. Anything to no, 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 there's a whole force. The the whole town is enforced by these guards. These uh, okay. guards. Right. So he's like a deputy, but he's been there for like 79 years. <laughs> okay, so he's still a rookie. <laughs> yeah, basically. Apparently his only character trait is that he's in a forbidden romance with Bronwyn, the woman whose voice falls on deaf ears. We must spread the word! No! I will not have this gossip, Bronwyn! But these same folks still wish for her to treat their livestock for mad cow disease. I honestly don't see the chemistry between these two. Maybe someone can explain it. They want to make us think there is because she's a female, he's a man, they looked at each other, he, he, she gave him a thing that he liked as a kid, and it's just like, aww, that's a thing that has emotion, I think. Oh yeah, and everybody hates Rondier because he's a cop within a corrupt police force. Ugh. Oh, let it go, knife is. One day, our true king will return. And pry us right out from under your pointy boots. Man, Arendir is the worst soldier ever. He hears something about poisoning, does not report to his commanding officer. Does not investigate where the poisoning was said to have been and report that to his commanding officer. Milk sludge out of a cow, does not immediately run back to report to his commanding officer. Finds a destroyed village, does not report to his commanding officer. Goes down into a tunnel where movability is limited, meaning he will not be able to fight with his bow or sword. And upon discovering this, does not run back and report it to his commanding officer. Well then, it's a good thing we won't have to look at his sourpuss face or his comatose acting anymore. Right? Then we have Theo, son of Bronwyn, who is also a little maggot. A thief child who finds Throsen robbing his neighbors with his best friend, which just so happens to be this guy. Theo gets wrapped up in a blood sword, and gee, I wonder who this could be in five seasons. But don't you dare make a yo mama joke to him. Halbrand, who is a total piece of work, he quickly abandons his raft crew to the sailing tuna. Another psychopath with no remorse. And I understand characters like this can grow and become something completely different, which he likely will, but this just adds to the list of uncharming characters. The Harfoots are really in touch with Middle-earth. They study the skies, believe in superstitions, know the historical nature of Middle-earth, and they're extremely wary and secluded from others. Are they hiding that well with fucking wagon wheels sticking out the <laughs> yeah, side and shit? Hmm, I wonder where they're hiding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stupid. Hell, that baby oh, stay quiet. Baby, yeah. this look, look at this look obvious, at obvious community, like of huts and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. like, look at the wagon. It just it sticks out like a sore thumb. Like, there's no way that you would yeah. miss that. That's fine. But the banter between the two main Harfoots is very tiring. They obviously put in a lot of effort to excel with these characters, but with only moderate success. The Troublemaker and the Worry Wart should be a hilarious combination, but instead, we're just left with constant and pointless bickering. You know, judging by how the building are up, I'm guessing she's gonna be a free spirit that likes to travel. Haven't you ever wondered? You think? 
What else is out there? Oh, she's a Disney princess. She is a Disney princess. What's around the river bend? I can't, I can't help but feel like there's something more out there. Nori's character makes no sense at all. She's a carefree, mischievous troublemaker, but feels everyone is her responsibility? What? You mean like when you took small children into dangerous territory and nearly got them all killed by a wolf you had no means of protecting yourself from? Incredible. It's almost like they're giving her arbitrary reasons to do things, so the plot happens. No, I guess the the wolf just kind of forgot about the Harfoots. <laughs> he wasn't hungry. He just he just ate a load of berries. He was waiting maybe, for them to leave so he could have the berries. It's like oh, yeah, maybe it's just like, why are they on my territory? Go, you know. Yeah. And then soon yeah, like, you, you damn off. Harfoots, get off my lawn. <laughs> and they and they left, and he's like, all is at peace now. Oh. <laughs> That's all you needed. The two encounter the stranger, who is the big mystery. It's only a mystery if you're Helen Keller, whom this character was inspired from. Ah! Honestly, let's look at the totality of facts presented to us. He crashes via fireball, of which the crash site forms a giant red eye. His flames are so evil they do not produce warmth. He hears black speech within him. In his chanting of magic and heat, he inadvertently spell casts and a hard foot twists his ankle, and he absorbs both light and heat to create darkness all around him. So he's either Sauron or something like Durin's Bane. After all, there's not much difference between a wizard and a Balrog. Well, damn, I thought because he was naked, he might be Gollum. The dwarves were temperamental, suspicious, stubborn, and easily roused. Pretty consistent for a dwarf, and I kind of like what they did with them because that's what they're supposed to be, but it still doesn't add to the list of charming characters. Elrond seems pretty level-headed, and he's not an elf lord apparently. I'm not even sure why they put this in the script, since he already seems to be doing some of the king's most important tasks. The undying lands of Valinor. At last... They are going home! And everyone clapped. Wow, there should be a lot more people there, the way he's talking. Yeah, like, this is like, a big fucking deal in elf... culture. Elf lords only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you doing here, Elrod? Get the fuck out! Yeah, hey, get the fuck out of here, non-elf lord. He's paired up with Calabrimbor, the greatest smith to have ever lived, to create what will be the ultimate transformation of all Middle-earth. He is quite well-spoken, insightful, and fair. Elrond was actually quite charming, even when they defined him as a bad friend to the dwarves. And of course I was rooting for Elrond to come through with the endurance test, working smarter, not harder. The show is in desperate need for likable and relatable characters. For God's sake, even an everyman, a person ordinary enough to be relatable to the average audience member. Someone who deals with everyday problems, but is placed in situations over their head. Someone more grounded and less wacky than the supporting characters. And I guess the closest thing we have to that is Bronwyn, but even she's a bit extraordinary at times. The most interesting thing about this series is watching Sauron's plans unfold in every region. But I find myself more concerned about the background characters than the main ones. I go through this list and I ask myself, why should I care? I don't understand how such beautiful cinematography can be filled with such sour and depressing faces. The most egregious flaw in these episodes is the characters. The show lacks the love, integrity, and honor that was so pivotal in The Lord of the Rings, if it can be compared. I think the people who make this shit forget the characters make the story. And one thing I see thrown around a lot is, oh, you have to give the show more time. The first two episodes were released as The Hook. They had more runtime than the average movie, and they still failed miserably at that. So why would anyone want to continue? Shouldn't they work hard to get me to like these characters and root for them? But if nothing else, root for Sauron. Yeah! We're bullies! <laughs> <laughs> See, it can't hold rocks! <laughs> What a shitty paper swine, he can't even hold rocks.